Um, let's just start the session. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna look at uh, model, uh, model explainability. Um, so let's start with what it means. So what is, I think it's better to do it here, okay. So uh, what is model explainability? So um, I think it's uh, self-explanatory actually, um, just, uh, but just to recap, okay. Okay, so uh, let's say you just made a prediction by using a machine le learning model, right? So you could use any of the models that you have uh, been using so, so, so far, and uh, you want to show how each component or uh, how uh, the, the um, features that you have used to predict uh, affect the output of the model because um, we need to know the results, uh, what the results are depending upon, right? So uh, it has three as uh, aspects, uh, transparency, it shows how uh, uh, we should interpret uh, the working of the model as a human. Uh, interpretability means uh, uh, more as a, how, uh, the model's decision should be understandable and relatable to uh, our knowledge, the domain no knowledge and accountability. It shows uh, just to show the fairness and the compliance of the, uh, like the output or the prediction of the model, just to show that. So uh, let's say uh, for this week's uh, project, you are de detecting fraud, right? So. Um, so, uh, as I've explained, uh, it provides three uh, be benefits. The first one is understanding, just to see how uh, the model made the decision. So, let's say uh, you are deciding between uh, fraud and non-fraud, right? So, uh, the output is going to be just fraud and non-fraud, or the mo uh, or zero and ones, right? Zero could, could be no, uh, not a fraud, and uh, one could, could be fraud, right? So uh, we have the answers, but we need to understand how it, uh, we got to this answer. So that's the understanding part. The trust part is just to uh, give us more confidence in our model because. Uh, if the model is not uh, using the right features, uh, we we can see and we can change that. And the last one is for de debugging. So as I have said, if uh, it needs more uh, like correction or identity uh, identification, we can uh, see how the results is depending on the model, and we can uh, like tweak it a bit. So. Uh, like for example, we can use, we can see how uh, for the fraud detection, uh, the explainability is going to be understanding why a certain transaction are flagged as uh, fraudulent and can help improve uh, further uh, detection strategies and gain insight into how uh, the pattern is formed. So uh, any questions so far guys? Okay, no question from Matthias. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see, uh, we, we're gonna see uh, two frameworks and I think uh, we have a code for the shop in the line. Um, so uh, let's start with shop. So SHAP is just used to explain the model outputs of the machine uh, le le learning mo model. So it's just based on a game theory. So it's just the distribution of prediction among the features. So it just shows how like, uh, it's just like feature importance, but for uh, the prediction. 
So, uh, so it's just the distribution of prediction among the features. So uh, one feature could have a large distribution and the others could have low distribution. So it's just there to show us or to just um, visualize it. So we have three plots, the summary plot, the force plots, and the dependency plots. So uh, the sharp, the summary plots is just an overview of future importance. So it's just for all of the the um, the prediction and for all of the features. So um, as soon as we just like uh, finish the prediction, we can see uh, just from uh, all of the predictions and from all of the features, just a ranked by importance and impact of the outputs or the prediction. Okay, so uh, in the first plots is just uh, there to they visualize the feature contribution to the single prediction. So le let's say we want to see, um, let's say um, someone is flagged as fr uh, fraud, right? So we want to see that specific person's uh, prediction and how the features are contributing. So which feature is contributing more and which feature is contributing less. So we can see that by force plot. And the dependency plot is just there to show the, the relationship between feature and the prediction. So uh, just the interaction between these two things, the features and uh, the effects of their output or the model output. So uh, the line uh, is more of a local. This one is a global, more, more the sharp. SHAP is for global and the line is for local. So it's just there um, to explain individual prediction by approximating the model lo locally. So the, the first one is globally, but this one is just for the local one. So um, just the data locally and fits simply, uh, fits simple mo model to approximate the black box model's behavior. So it has one plot, um, the feature importance plot, just to show the most influ influential uh, feature for a specific prediction. So as the name implies, it's local, like for the specific prediction. And uh, it's just there to highlight which feature are more important in the local appro approximation. So, uh, just to see uh, in a tabular form. So when we interpret uh, these two things, uh, the sharp is more of a global le level or global based, and the line is just there for uh, an inst local instance or instance based. And the feature, the feature extraction uh, is for sharp. Is it is there? Uh, it's just captures the complex interactions between the features and um, the prediction. And the line uh, uh, sometimes uh, assumes independence. So it's just going to do for the local independently, uh, often actually, not all of the time. And when we come to the computation, uh, the computational cost, uh, the sharp is uh, higher because it uses the global uh, approximation or co consistency, but the line is lower because it uses the local approximation. So uh, any questions guys so, so far? Hello? Okay, so is everything clear? Um, okay, for now, okay. Okay, uh, let's see. An example.
Can you see my screen? Can you guess it? Okay. So uh, I think uh, we have worked with this um, data previously. Uh, so uh, let's just see the feature importance by using uh, sharp and line. Um, okay, so this is just the house uh, data. I think we have seen how to use it uh, or we have uh, used it for example, for uh, just the tutorial of the modeling. So um, I think we remember how it goes. So we have uh, these features. So I think we have around 50 or uh, yeah, 80. 80 features and um, these 80, 80 features are going to be used um, just to determine the house price. So our end point or what we're trying to predict is the, the house price by using these features. So we have um, the lot frontage, the lot area, streets, alley, and so on. Uh, if it has pool, pool, uh, fences, and so on. So. So the first thing we did was just um, clean it and prepare it, the features, uh, prepare the features, split it, and yeah. Okay. So we chose our model to be the XGB regressor, and we have passed this, uh, and we have uh, fit our X and Y and predicted the x the test so it's as it is already it has already been uh, predicted so uh, so it since um since it doesn't accept uh, any uh object type data or or even uh bull type data we just uh, changed it to integers and yeah so if you can see here every um every data type is uh, either float or integer so let's start with the summary plots so if you remember the summary plot is just um summarizing uh like from uh, of the the overall uh, prediction uh, which features had uh, the most effect or just ranking them based on their effect so um, so the higher the highest uh, the highest uh, feature the the feature that had the highest uh, impact was the overall quality and uh, like the gravel area first floor year build and so on and the least one was uh, the garage type attached and the kitchen quality and so on. So we can see here uh, the feature values or the feature importance here. So which feature is more important and which feature is less important. So if you can see here, it's almost zero. It just have a little of a little bit uh, value. But if you if you see here, it has a lot of value, right? So yeah. So uh, any questions there? Just to check before mo moving on. OK, I'm going to take that as a, as a no. And for the, the course plots, I just used um, the first the first row that's, uh, that's found in the test. So if you can see here, um, the overall condition has a six. So uh, the higher, uh, this way means higher and this way means lower. So yeah. So for this one, for the uh, the first row of the uh, what's found in the test uh, data frame, the, the, predicted va the predicted value was uh, 120. 
dollars. So what was, uh, which features contributed to this one? So we, we can see the overall condition was the highest one. And then the overall quality, the grave, uh, the gravel areas, the first floor and so on, the fireplace and so on. So uh, you can see uh, for individual or for each uh, um, like uh, rows or for individual entries for your case, uh, why they're uh, pretty fit to be that one. Um, yeah, okay. So the last one, uh, the dependency plots is just there to show, like I just asked it to show me uh, how the load frontage is um, uh, like with when compared to the other features. So you can see here, it's distributed, like it's densely di distributed here and sparsely here. So this is just to show uh, how they are dependent on each other. So, um, yeah, any quick questions, guys? We have a late camer, Nadia. Welcome. And yeah, any questions, guys? Okay, no questions so far. Okay, so make sure to just add these features into this week's pro project. It's not a lot of work, actually. It's easy, it's just a couple of lines of uh, code. So, like four or five line of code. So I think it's going to be fun. Oh, okay. Okay, so no questions, guys. And I get some th thumbs up if there are no questions. And what about the rest? It's just like five of us, so every two, everyone has to participate. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me just stop the recording.